Many people are asking the question, why do we have fluoride in our water supply? And the answer is that the most chronic condition in the world, it's, it's not cancer, it's not HIV, it is tooth decay. Uh, some 2.4 billion people, including 486 million children, um, suffer from cavities. So the governments back in the 1950s and 60s decided that something needs to be done. Fluoride prevents cavities from taking place, and it's a very cheap way, not necessarily the best way, but definitely the cheapest way to deal with this massive problem. And basically the rationale was, and I believe this took place first in the 1950s, was, okay, given the potential for fluoride to make super physiologically strong teeth, what can we do to reduce the cavities and tooth decay that would occur in children and adult populations? Let's put fluoride in the drinking water. So that's what they did. They did not do this, I was told, because it was necessarily the best way to take care of teeth and avoid cavities. It turns out there are a bunch of other things that you can do. It was a, and remains, a fairly low cost approach for these cities to introduce fluoride to the drinking water. And that is why we have fluoride added to our water supply. But is it completely safe? Absolutely not. Before I go into that, I want you guys to know that there are two sides of this debate. There are people who want to use fluoride because of its benefits, and then there are people who want to completely ban fluoride because of its potential disadvantages to the human body. What we need is a balanced opinion. The benefits of using fluoride to prevent cavities are well documented. It is established science, there is no debate about it. But according to my research, outside of our oral health, I do not see a single benefit of using fluoride. In fact, many studies reveal an association between the use of fluoride and damages to our brain, our bones, Higher doses of fluoride can even cause miscarriages, it can lower IQ, it can even kill people in rare circumstances. Do keep in mind that none of these studies reveal a cause and effect relationship. All they do is identify associations because these are not scientific studies, these are observational studies. Let me give you one example. If you are conducting an observational study to explore the relationship between the consumption of fluoride and rates of intelligence, other factors that can contribute to IQ levels, uh, such as the quality of education, are not taken into consideration. So one child who grew up in an area where there was a lot of fluoride in the water may have lower IQ, not because of fluoride, but because of bad education system. That being said, because there is so much data out there that creates an overwhelming association between the use of fluoride and extreme dangers to the human body, I believe that is a major, major cause of concern. To give you one example, Harvard University did a meta-analysis of 27 studies and found fluoride to be extremely dangerous to the human body. The link to that study is in the description. I strongly recommend that you click on it to learn more about it. I want to clarify that I'm not advocating that we ban fluoride. This video is about giving you a fair and impartial analysis about the information around the debate on fluoride. Also keep in mind that the scientific community does not claim that fluoride is completely safe. They accept that there are benefits and disadvantages, just like any other chemical. So it all comes down to using only the amount of fluoride that is needed to keep your teeth healthy. So what is that safe dosage of fluoride? According to the National Institutes of Health, children under the age of 13 should not consume more than two milligrams of fluoride in a day, and the limit for adults is four milligrams in a day. Now, the CDC recommends that we add at least 0.7 milligrams of fluoride in, our, in every liter of our water supply. So if you drink three liters of plain water in a day, you're consuming 2.1 milligrams of fluoride. But I don't just drink water. I also drink a lot of herbal teas and at least one cup of coffee, and there's a lot of water used to make them. So I end up consuming somewhere close to three to four milligrams of fluoride every day. But what about my toothpaste? On average, a pea-sized amount of toothpaste contains 0.4 milligrams of fluoride and a full portion contains one milligram. This is where it gets very tricky, especially for children. They're often unsupervised when they're brushing their teeth. They like the taste of the toothpaste and so they end up eating some of it, which increases the amount of fluoride that we put in our body. Before I give you my recommendations, I want you guys to know 
uh, not to take this as scientific advice. I'm not a dentist, I'm not a doctor, I'm a journalist, a content creator, and my job is to give you a fair and impartial analysis um, uh, based on the information out there. Also keep in mind that science is always changing, right? The global pool of knowledge doubles every 10 years. We thought that fluoride was completely safe back in the 1950s and 60s. We now have information that challenges that belief. So based on the information that is currently available to us, I recommend that if you live in an area where your water supply is supplemented with fluoride and 70% of Americans live in towns and cities where fluoride is added to their water supply, I recommend that you get a filter to filter out all the fluoride from your water. That would be number one. Number two, to take advantage of the benefits of fluoride in a safe way, I recommend that you use toothpaste that has got fluoride in it only use a pea sized amount and make sure not to eat any of it. My name is Azar Fateh. I create content on leadership, on success mindset, and on health and wellness. I strongly recommend that you subscribe to my channel and I ask you to share my video with at least one person in your life.